Yeah, you still training over at um, at uh, uh, Fight Sport? Yeah, I'm training. I'm training Fight Sports now. So you were at Alliance? Did you train? Did you just skip, or what happened? No. So I still Alliance. I still training. Uh, I still fighting for Marcelo, but and then I had to move here, and then I just I'm I'm training Cyborgs now because the best train down here. Mm -hmm. So I'm trained there. The people are really nice. They treat me good. So. Yeah, I, feel, I feel home there. It's really nice. And do you mostly train gi or no gi? Uh, gi and both. Do you both? Yeah, I do both. You train f like twice a day, once a day? Uh, twice, once. Just depends. Yeah, jujitsu. And then I do like uh, weightlifting, strength conditioning. Like, and then I add uh, more things. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Training is such a bitch, man. I remember like training when you're being competitive is just such a such a headache, man. Yeah, last year was a good year for me. So <laughs> I took a long break, like. Yeah. You know, like seriously, if I train like six months, it was a lot because I got hurt and had this, had that. So I took a few months off and now I'm back. So back it, if you're training at Cyborgs and you compete at some of these events, like do you still wave the Alliance banner? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's true. So how it's does true. That... I, I mean, I, I just signed up as Alliance, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, so just... it, yeah, I talk with him. It's, it's, it's fine. So just do fight for things. Things. Yeah. Because yeah. I go to Marcellus. I go to Marcellus. I come back. I stay like two weeks there, two weeks, and then come back. Up in New York? In New York, yeah. yeah. What was the last time you were up there? Uh, it was last year before I got hard. Okay. Because <laughs> I was thinking like, the, I don't before know if the... Before I was, the Worlds. I was up there like, they wouldn't even, they weren't even letting drop-ins in because I was up there like, maybe, it was maybe like a year ago or so. I don't know. When when, that, when was I up in New York? It was like a year ago, right? February. February last year. And I was like, oh, I was trading at Henzo's and I was like, oh, maybe I can go to, over to Alliance. And they're like, oh, no drop-ins. This COVID thing is fucking everybody up. So I was just like, ha, like has the training down by, um, um, how long have you been with uh, Cyborg for? One year. A year? Have you yeah. seen, like, like how have they been dealing with, like, COVID and stuff? They don't care. They don't care. They just, just, everybody just walks train. in. Yeah, they just they spray you with Lysol yeah, as you they, walk in the door. Like, yeah, no, they don't care. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's all good. No New York people are more, like, scared, you know. You know, it's New York. <laughs> yeah. So people are scared. New York's uh, crazy. Like, it's the opposite of Florida. Like, Florida, the they don't give mm -hmm. a shit. Mm -hmm. You can go cough in a cake and serve it in Florida. They don't care. Like, in they New were, York, it's yeah, nuts. Yeah, they're about any, everything. But common sense, they, they don't worry about. <laughs> that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. What's, um, so when you, when you competed against, um, uh, in the ADCC and you went against Gordon Ryan, like, what was your thoughts going into that match? Did you have a specific man, plan or were you just like, man, I didn't have a plan. <laughs> no, nothing at all. No, because like, uh, I got invited one week before. Ten days, one week. Yeah. So I talked to Marcel, like, oh, they invited me. So I'm just going to go. I was in Puerto Rico. I was, like, just hanging out because I trained a lot, like, for five months. And I fought the Worlds. And then they did invite me for, for ADCC. I was like, okay, let me hang out, do whatever I want. Great. And then uh, Mo, he sent a message to me and then say, man, you want to fight? I said, yeah, I go. I took a plane back, started training for, I don't know, five days. And I went, and I was like talking to my friend Matheus. I was like, man, I don't know the rules because I never fought. I fought before the, the 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 trials, but I didn't, even, you know, back there back then I didn't even care. So I would just go, you know, pretty young, like seventeen when I fought the trials. I just go. So I was like Matheus, I don't know the rules, so I'm just gonna go and whatever, <laughs> whatever happened happened. So I won the first, second, and third, and then I did a final with Gordon. And then he was like, man, it's 40 minutes. I was laid down and then I stand up. I was like, what? 40 minutes? I was like, fuck. <laughs> like I got stuff to do, man. Yeah. Like, I, gotta but I, I say I, 10 minutes I can hold, but because I was drinking, like chilling, doing whatever, like a like normal person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let me go. I was like, I have to tap him, do something, you know, try to for a footlock, whatever. Yeah. Because 40 minutes, man, it's a long time. It's, yeah, insane. It's, a, it's a long time, you know, and, and it's not like whatever, guys, like Gordon, you know, stuff. <laughs> well, look at like, okay, so you've rolled with Marcelo Garcia a lot. And I think like for me, the two goats are Marcelo Garcia and, and Gordon Ryan and, and in their own in their own respects, they're, they accelerate at different things. What's the biggest difference between rolling with, obviously you didn't roll in a competitive sense with, um, with uh, Marcelo Garcia, but when you roll with Marcelo to rolling with Gordon, like what did you feel was like the main difference? Oh, uh, it's hard to tell because like uh, when I trade Marcelo, we train daily, you know. So 
it's it's kind of different. Like you get used to to work with that guy. Gordon, I just compare with him. I I I realize that he's uh, Gordon. He's on time and he has like all kinds of techniques that's con that connect. You know, the, his mechanic is perfect. And Marcelo is the same. Marcelo, uh, like he don't he don't let you breathe. You know, Gordon he goes in control, all that. My Marcelo don't let you breathe, so he just go 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 go. Yeah. So it's hard like to hold him. If he's going to pass our guard, he's going to pass our guard. Gordon is the same, but he's more controlled. If you see his mats, he's not exploding all the time. He's well controlled, like all the time. Yeah, I think I think it was like the first series of Marcelo's video. I like watching Marcelo's Nogi series back in like the like early two thousands when he spoke like no English, and you'd have like Babs. I think was in him too, and like it was like translated like like Hey guys, we're gonna grab the neck here, and it's like that's clearly not Marcelo's voice, and now like you can hear him. But like I think one of the things he talked about was like in, in just from his competitions, he's always been his best defense was being constantly aggressive. He's always attacking guys. He's always looking for arm drags and guillotine chokes and taking the back. Yeah, he's looked to channel the, the chance to tap the guy. So yeah. that's why he, he goes, he doesn't stop to create that opportunity. So he got it. Yeah. yeah. Do you, th like, so are there any guys at Marcelo's that do MMA consistently? Mm, no, 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 no. I know that trains there. No, were you um, were you there when Dylan Dennis was there? Yeah, I was there. Did you train with Dylan a lot? Or? I did. I did train with him. What's your relationship with him like? No, nah, nothing now. <laughs> like no good. No, or just don't have like any the beginning, he was nice, and then and then he started like hanging out with other people, and then he just turned to a different person. I don't have nothing against him, right? But I'm like, okay, if you want to be my friend, great. If you don't want to be my friend, it's fine. You think like once he started hanging out with Conor McGregor that that like that that exposure to like that level of success and money. Oh, uh, it can be because yeah. like the guy the guy didn't have that. Once he has that thing, you know, because money he has. But once he started to have that thing, I think he started like fuck. I can be another person, you know. Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting famous and this yeah. and that. So your level, you know, goes up. Yeah. So I, I don't think he's a bad person. I don't think he's a bad person. It's just the people that he's around, you know. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Like yeah. it, that happens a lot too. Like like in the MMA space, especially like you know guys because like jujitsu, MMA, like it's boxing, anything, right? Like that's not a glamorous sport to get into. It, be, it can become glamorous if you achieve success, but it's a lot of fucking getting your ass kicked for a long time and a lot of sacrifice and dedication. Yeah, yeah. And then like the people that you're around, you start like making that, that cheddar and they're like, Oh man, like everybody wants to ride those coattails. And like, it's crazy. Like you look at a guy like Conor McGregor, like five years ago, he was making like 30 grand a year and now he's making 30 million a year. Like million, how yeah. fucking insane is that? Like in terms of like the life trajectory and, and, and how crazy everything is. But I talked to like, I'm one of the few people that like, that have a, um, I'm on the like I talk to Dylan occasionally on like Instagram and stuff. I'm trying to get him to come on the podcast. I'm trying to get Gordon Ryan too, man. Like especially to to respond to what Nikki Rod said. Although I don't want to like you know stoke the fire if there's some issues there that are personal. I don't want to get into that with him. But um, like that Danaher. Like did you were you surprised when the Danaher death squad broke up? Mm, well, well, yeah. I mean, I didn't know like, that was supposed to happen. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone knew it was going to happen. Yeah, because they were together all the time. I, I even hanging out with Gordon like twice. Yeah, because uh, his girlfriend's friend of my wife, so hanging out like oh good. His girlfriend's a friend of your wife's. Yeah, how do they know each other? Uh, she, yeah, my wife used to train in Hansos. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they, it's from from Hansos. From Hansos, yeah. Yeah, like that was crazy. That split. Like I know I was talking to um, uh, oh my goodness, I mean, uh, my brain's fucking farting. Uh, oh my god, why can't I think of his name? Uh, one hundred and fifty-five pound. BJJ stud beat fucking oh my goodness this is gonna Gary Tony why can't I couldn't Tony, think of the name yeah. Gary Tony like it was like some fucking Asian name that I couldn't pronounce so I was talking to Gary and he didn't even really know like I thought oh is this like a long time coming and he's like oh, I got back in town and they're like oh we're on the, the we're going separate ways and he's like I didn't he was like collateral damage so I was like oh man I always thought it was crazy that Nikki Ryan stayed with the other team and didn't go with his brother yeah. so that's that's kind of nuts but that's gotta be the main the main thing yeah, it's, I mean, it has to be. you know, like that's what like selfishly, I just I'm just like I would just like to know, like, oh, how the fuck did that happen? Because they said, you know, like Nikki said, or, um, Nikki Rodriguez said, you know, we cut the poison out. But there's been speculation that that was Gordon. There's been speculation that it was between Nikki and Gordon, Nikki, Ryan and Gordon, that they had personal family issues. Then I've even heard that it was uh, 
that it was Gordon's girlfriend. And I mean, like, I guess if you live like, you know, seven, eight people living together, training all the other, you're bound to get on each other's nerves. You know, it's like, it's like the real world, right? Like yeah. someone's going to get drunk and say something that you're like, I don't want to fucking deal with this person's thing anymore. But yeah, it's just like crazy. Cause yeah, you yeah. know, they, they're and just it's a bunch so, of alphas who, you yeah, know, of just course, kill like, each other. Every they're day. all like top three and like, and everything they compete in. Yeah. So, you know, what's crazy is like, I, I, Gordon talked about doing gi for a while mm -hmm. and then we haven't heard anything about that. He's not doing gi. But I remember, that, first of all, that was like, what, five, five years ago? And it, for a while you saw him training in the E, some goofy pictures, but I think he realized quickly how, you know, <laughs> at the highest level, the 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 depth of the Gi game and technicality is a whole nother thing, yeah. you know? But yeah, I definitely think it's, I think it's easier to go from Gi to no Gi. To no Gi. Yeah, because like, yeah. you have to, like, so one of the things that I've always like thought about was if you want to do no gear, you want to do MMA, should you ever have a gi on? And there's a case for both. And um, one of the things I think that like I've heard from like guys like Matt, Sarah and some of the other guys is like they start everyone in a gi for like at least like, two or three stripes in their white belt. And I think it's smart because gi does make you better defensively. And you like there's so many ways to get choked with the gi on. So you're always aware of, oh, shit. And your balance is base is getting pulled around and your forearms get huge because you're gripped just like, no, like and, crazy. And, and the gi is so much tighter. The moment yeah. you have fabric to grab and pull, like, it's a different game. No gi, slippery. I mean, you can make yourself impossibly to get up. But again, if you train with the gi and no gi, it's a, it's a different flow of movement in a way. There's a different know? world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you prefer, gi or no gi? I don't care. Yeah. Whatever they tell me, like, you want to fight, they fight, yeah. whatever. It's like, that's like they do sambo yeah. when they wear the gi top and then no gi pants. Uh, yeah. That's no, like, a little sambo, or whatever. Uh, sambo's, sambo's crazy. Get a hold and it go. Go. Yeah, it, It's crazy, man. That's what, like, um, always, when I trained at Eddie's for a long time, like, it was funny because, like, Eddie Bravo was, like, probably the first person that was, like, directly no gi as just, a, a you know, instrumentally doing no gi. But he always wore gi pants. And, like, so much of the lockdown system, at least, like, call it 10th point 10th planet like 1.0 back you know 2000 whatever fuck it was four or five when i was training there that was very like he always wore gi pants and like that made a humongous difference for like rubber guard effectiveness for um like it's one like aoki and some of the guys that did that they always wore those the the, the leggings um you know like lockdown and stuff like that that's why like when hoyler fought him i think that hoyler made him wear the gi pants and i was really surprised because like i've rolled with eddie with gi pants on and you're not getting on a lockdown, but no gi pants on, you can you can probably maneuver a little bit and have more, I mean, that's not an easy task, but you can make stuff happen. So it's interesting to see that how like, it's like no gi, but still with the gi pants or vice versa. Yeah, they're stretched on there, so it's kind yeah. of hard to get out. You know, we all need the Cobra Kai gis, like with no sleeves, just like the like the like the vests and just start, just start a whole new sport. That was my Halloween costume. Cobra Kai? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. I was talking to um, I was I'm trying to get uh um. So Jesse Cove, I did that flick with his is Martin Cove's son. Who you know, Martin Cove is the main bad guy. I'm trying to get those guys on for Father's Day to talk. They're just he's just so busy with Cobra Guy. It's crazy how like you were you a fa how old are you? Twenty four. Twenty four. Oh my god. Twenty four. You're twenty four. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, you're a baby. You know what I was going to ask him if he remembers the old Karate Kid movies, but he's like, Cobra Kai is the old Karate Kid movie for him. That's crazy, man. I have a son who's twenty one, so it's 21. nuts. Yeah, that's crazy. So, um, did you ever watch the old Karate Kid movies? No, I didn't. You're not missing anything. No, no they're they're great, man. They're like a staple. Like that's like no, so you're Juan. You're thirty. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. So 37. you remember like like Karate Kid and like Ninja Turtles a little bit, dude. I, I, from from the first memories that I have, I was totally obsessed with martial arts. So yeah, Karate Kid. You know the Ninja movies, the the, the, the turtles. Anything related to martial arts, every Halloween costume was a, a samurai something. Yeah. So, so those karate movies, I, again, I go and watch them now and go, oh, but as a kid, I was like, ah, oh, dude. Jiu Jitsu really hasn't had its like watershed movie moment yet. Like they've tried with David Mamet's like Red Belt. You remember that it was a good movie though. It was I good, remember. but it was like, I feel like the problem is that like they try to commercialize, like, like look at Rocky. Like we can say Rocky is like the epitome of a boxing movie, right? So like Rocky didn't go out there and go, we're going to like really hype and glamorize boxing. It was a story about this guy who was an underdog who went through his own personal stuff and boxing was like the backdrop. Yeah. So like the movie, what was it? Um, oh, that fight you were with uh, that, that MMA one did a pretty good warrior, did a good job. But good. like Mamet and some of the other movies that like they, they try to make jujitsu. So like, like they try to, and, and also like jujitsu is not 
from a spectator point of view, if you're not into jujitsu, you can watch boxing and be like, I get it. He's punching him. Yeah. He's winning. Jujitsu is complicated. It's hard to like, unless there's some big spectacular moments, it's difficult to watch on screen, but we haven't really had like that, that stellar jujitsu karate kid movie yet. What about that? Uh, the, the latest one where Henzo plays a part and it's with that famous actor, both his name and the name of the movie escaped me, but it's maybe like two years old. It's on prime, I think. You can get it through it's, Prime. I don't know what it is. I, that's that's it's exceed, exceedingly ambiguous. <laughs> Henzel's in a movie that's uh, on Prime. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Is it like, um, is it a jiu-jitsu movie or is it like a... It is. Just a jiu-jitsu movie. Okay. It's not like Choke or anything, right? Like, you know. Yeah, jiu-jitsu movie's going to be hard. Like, do some. Because yeah. pe people don't understand. Yeah. That's why I have ADCC. <laughs> so I, you I can... Born a Born champion. champion. Oh, born a champion. Yeah, that's that's okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's it's, it's uh, supposed to be really good. Yeah, no, I saw that. That's uh, my yeah. buddy Sean Patrick Flannery's right. uh, flick. Yeah, he wrote that. So, um, you, uh, review? Would you like to review it right now? It was a uh, it was it was a wonderful movie that I uh, <laughs> I would like. No, I mean it was good. I think it was. I mean, look, it's. It was a good movie, but I, you know, as much as that was a jujitsu movie, it's hard for me to watch friends in movies because I have a hard time seeing beyond them being like, that's my buddy Sean in a movie, right? Especially when you're playing so close to like who that is in real life. <clears throat> I thought it was good. It's also pigeon held by the like, it's not a $50 million movie. It's probably like a two or $3 million like budget on it. it. It wasn't bad. It was okay. I mean, I just think that like, it's probably the closest we've come to like a Rocky esque movie from that perspective. But I still don't think like we've had anything that makes the average person like the average person that knows jujitsu is like all oh, the MMA stuff, right? And like I remember back uh, at the in initial UFCs, remember like people would like the, it would hit the ground and people start booing, oh stand them up, like they didn't unless you were Phil Baroni and you were just getting fucking lit, knocking people out. Nobody really wanted to see these things anymore. It's crazy. So at least the sports coming full circle. But we I don't think we've had like that movie that makes people go like like oh man like when I left Karate Kid or Delta Force or like. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was like walking to the parking lot, like going, "Oh, I'm gonna do some karate today. I want to go do some stuff." Like, I don't think we've had that move that movement in jujitsu where anyone's left a movie and been like. And right now, I feel like if you're a jujitsu nerd, you go find that movie and you watch that. But like, I don't think like Red Belt is something that the average person's watching, leaving the theater, and then they're like, "How do you do a fucking jujikatami?" You know, like, you, you, you almost need like the the hero's journey, probably from like a younger teenager perspective. Yeah. To, to to deliver home maybe that same same message where <laughs> what you see it, it's almost like the washed out hero's journey yeah. you know in, in right. a way he, he did a different that's, a different a that's kind of what um born a star was a little bit right it was like he was like uh beyond his prime fighting and going back to to fight and, and red belt too so, so that's true yeah, yeah that's maybe we need the opposite maybe just the guy who's like we need the conor mcgregor story like the guy who's like <laughs> on a yacht and he's just like i'm gonna go fight this weekend for 30 million like just totally glamorized jujitsu and but speaking of like it's like especially with um bernardo and bjj fanatics like guys are like someone who hasn't been an active competitor like um Oh my gosh, um, Jeff Glover! Like he hasn't really competed in years, and he's still making a bunch of money from those videos. Like that's great that those guys like because like it was really hard to find good jujitsu technique, um, you know, back in the day. Yeah, and and now with so much uh, free content on YouTube, you would think that wouldn't be the case, but I think the the pandemic was like the perfect storm for BJJ fanatics, and they did a great job. You know, getting so much different talent and, and, and pricing it in a way that uh, I think a lot of people find it fair, you know, and, and, and now you have access to all this content and they seem to just, you know, getting a bigger and bigger uh, library under their books. It, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I think that like, like there's so much content on YouTube. The problem isn't finding content. The problem is like it's overwhelming if you're a new student. Like there was a point where you were like, I remember when I first got into jujitsu and like I wanted to learn more, there were literally no books on jujitsu. I went and picked up the, from my library jujitsu books and they were Japanese jujitsu. It was Wally J's small circle. And I was like, wrist locks? This kind of looks like what I was learning, but not really, right? Like they were like Aikido throws. So now, then there became a point where you could go and like, you could get like the DVD sets from like, oh, I forget who it was. It was like 
and, and like worldwide martial arts or something and like they have Budo like, videos for a yeah, while remember Budo, Budo videos, videos or, Budo videos yeah, yeah you go back I remember like in the back of um, uh, Black Belt magazine they'd have like Kanseka Munez was like some blue belt who was like had his own video series out and shit can you imagine a blue belt trying to put out a video series now it'd be tough man like there's so much competition <laughs> like some mediocre blue belt doing shit yeah. <clears throat> but now there's like so many videos you type in like armbar technique you know pull up 70,000 videos with 8,000 people doing it wrong 2,000 doing it in a different variation then you gotta figure out like how does this what's the right way what's the right way for me so but that's what the, that's what i think the the important part have you ever thought about doing like um like like adding a, a digital component to the school where like taping every class and having access to it or i have i have it's something that we're even still playing with the idea at some point i always love the idea of like maybe taping the fundamental curriculum if you could call it something and when you're teaching whatever class you also have it playing in all of your tvs mm -hmm. in, in the room that would be cool um but it's just a lot of work uh, and a lot of work in the in the part that maybe i don't have the experience which like the producing side of it like what are we going to tape how are we going to edit it and, and and all of that but um that's what? what i think those those bjj videos are cool because like if you think about it like you were saying when we started you go to like the library and get a bjj book and they wanted you to teach you bjj in 60 pages which is nearly impossible they're teaching you you know something here where now these new videos are like spending a couple hours in this very specific realm that now you can grab it and use yeah. it and put it together instead of learning the rear naked choke and the triangle which again as a beginner that's probably what you would look right like now they're they're, they're putting the, the training together much better in that sense the info that's what marcel does yeah yeah marcel. yeah during the class they go and re they, they record it every, every day and yeah, they put on the website so all the memberships they have access to oh that's good that's good for like review too it's be like what the fuck did we work on yeah. last week and that yeah. database is safe there and you can go back and look monday's class yeah yeah yeah, wow. yeah and you could yeah, just it's all, it's all there yeah you the could website. just tag it too like just tag it by like okay this mm -hmm. was fucking guard passes and neon stomach and then people can just google it and search that's justine be good on that stuff mm -hmm. like i was like or no, what else might be good is like to do like a live stream so like if you can't go to your class that day you can watch so you're keeping up with what's happening and stuff like that as another alternative to getting covid <laughs> no that's true though. i mean covid was brutal i i i, I didn't and uh, but there were academies who did like zoom training where people like did their own dummies at home and you know at this time at four world really numbers which again i think that's amazing there were a lot of like housewives and like siblings that were getting choked on yeah. like come here honey let me just let me just try this real quick yeah. <laughs> I, I, the idea for me of teaching through zoom is we should do the covid championships just everyone has to be tested positive for covid just, <laughs> the, fuck it. just the opposite like you can't not have covid and compete we'll just see what happens like how bad is this virus really we'll just it's see like, what it's like the high rollers covid edition yeah the high, high you're rollers gonna, you're gonna be positive doing COVID, so. i was doing that like four weeks ago everybody yeah. was sick like let's train fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. auto breath i was like oh yeah that's the biggest breathe. fear is like the respiratory stuff because i have asthma my son has asthma and like that's the biggest fear i think is like like the people that are dying my understanding most of it's respiratory illness that they're getting so like especially with the jujitsu because you're ex, ex you know you're you're uh extensively breathing and not only just like in someone's face but just the the output too like i'm surprised we haven't seen any there, there haven't been any jujitsu related covid deaths that we know of right one in brazil one in brazil yeah one guy but imagine that the, the millions of people who train jujitsu. If this was as dangerous, and I'm sure it is for some people, right? But jujitsu academies would be like you would have lost five percent of your people from yeah. from their relatives, or their family would have gotten it, and that that's just not the case. And again, at the beginning it was kind of like a flu, body aches and stuff. Lately, thank God, once again, it's more like a cold. Did you get? Yeah, no, cold. Did you ever catch COVID? I got caught COVID uh, on 2020 November, and I had a bad headache. Mm -hmm. one day which i never get headaches i had like bad body aches for like two days and then i lost my taste and my smell for like 10 days dude and almost went crazy and really? we, we all tested positive in my household so mine we, was we longer the the taste is longer, longer but i kept long? eating it was like whatever i'm gonna keep eating yeah, okay. it was like three months i remember what it tastes like and it was fucking amazing yeah so. it was like three months three, three months? months yeah wow no, no taste. taste i got lucky man. No smell. i was like whatever. that's a great diet program better. that should be a new thing like get covid you, you get can't, COVID taste shit. can't taste shit. that's yeah. what i was thinking about i was like if that ever happens to me i've never dealt with it if it ever happens to me i'll eat like broccoli every day like nothing tastes you know i'll be healthy yeah, yeah. tell I, yourself it's a steak it happened to me i had pizza every time just hoping it was gonna taste delicious just, just a burger just delicious stuff just, just, just no taste at all because no most of your taste, taste is through your smell too it's yeah. and, and and there's something like 
15 percent of the people who get COVID who never get it back. Oh, did you guys have Vinny? Did you get any any issues with your taste or Chris? How about you? No, I had uh, I had full taste. I didn't lose any sense of smell. Nothing. Nothing. But again, that was the first time around that that you know. The I first heard, variant of yeah, I heard this one again. Doesn't go to the, the COVID long. OG. Yeah. I got the OG strain. It's OG. like it's like weed now. It's like which strand of COVID did you get, man? I got the new COVID shit. It's really fire. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get a headache off of this shit, man. You're gonna wake up like, what happened? I'm all sore. I don't know what's happening. I got that fire COVID. I got baby. that fire 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 COVID. <laughs> I got that new o- Omicron COVID, man. Okay. Oh shit! What strand you got? What strand you got? <laughs> <laughs> what, what strand you want, man? Like that's crazy. That's um. That's yeah. That was like really apprehensive because my wife is one of those people who's like doesn't like vaccines and like when our son goes in like i'm like on the cusp i could i I see i understand the conspiracy for and against vaccines but i truly haven't done enough academic research nor do i have the knowledge to really say okay yes no it's good it's bad but like i could see both sides like the moon landing like i don't know if i had to flip a coin did we land on the moon i don't fucking think we did to be quite honest but i don't have enough like empirical data to really make an educated decision so when we got those covid shots it was like a big deal for us because it was like this it's like if you're not into vaccines and you're trying this one that they just kind of figured out last week if there's something that's going to go wrong with a vaccine it's probably going to be this fucking vaccine but i also think that because i was vaccinated and and um that when like Vinny who for sure had COVID, uh, like I, my symptoms were like in and out in two days. Like I had a little bit of a sore throat, a little bit of a headache, a little body aches, and then back to fine in like two days. But Jason, you, you had it originally. I did have it originally. Yeah. And then got vaccinated because if if you listen to that, uh, Dr. Malone podcast that, that he was in your Rogan, he, he says, if if you've never had it, (laughs) probably the vaccine is totally fine. It's if you already had COVID and recover from it, and again, you have some antibodies, doing the vaccine is just like an added risk. Like since you already have the protection for it, you know, like somehow it's like more more dangerous, which again, people should do whatever they want. Like if you want to get it, get it. Yeah. Well, I think that like, you don't have you only have the antibodies for an ex, like for a certain amount of time like i think that they is it yes yeah, so i don't know six what it months. is 6 months yeah. yeah so like i don't know if that's like if the vaccine you have to get it updated every few months or mm-hmm. how that's going to work but it's just but crazy you have the natural immunity also for some time right like eventually it wears off and, and you can catch yeah. it again yeah. So, yeah so yeah either way you're going to that's a good point yeah, yeah it's just crazy cuz like once we like I remember, man, it, it's like we like I think looking back at this history will be like, that's crazy. We lived like a lockdown where you couldn't leave your house and like you couldn't go out like I like living in. It, it's like, ah, oh, but like in hindsight, like that's I remember when I've traveled overseas to Asia and stuff and I'd be uh, like in Japan. And it was very typical, especially with bird flu and stuff that they were wearing masks everywhere. And I remember being like, God, this is a shitty way to live, like constantly in fear of catching some fucking respiratory disease. <laughs> Fast forward seven years later, like we're all wearing masks to go to fucking CVS and getting our temperature taken it's like god this is crazy like don't leave your house like i was like holy and I remember then when that happens like this is probably going to be a few weeks i'm like a few weeks my ass this is we're in this for the long haul and it's crazy how it's still affecting everybody and, and we still don't know the macro level of like how this is going to change society and you know the, the trickle down effect of it it's nuts a lot of political shit a lot yeah. and i mean we yeah, we do see we see like like suicides and overdoses that are at an all-time high and that's like probably the tip of the iceberg, right? Where what is the other percentage of people who are not just over that but are suffering and maybe will continue to suffering because now there's like precedent, right? The next COVID comes out or they find it in a year from now, they're gonna now say we'll do exactly the same way that we did before because they know people will accept it. How do they name the, the variant strains? Like I get it like a coronavirus is just a generic name for something that doesn't have a, an actual name to it. But like, how do they name it? This is like, is it like uh, hurricanes? Like they go through the alphabet, like A, B, C, D, E. So everyone gets a fair crack. Like uh, what if it was like the, like you could really fuck it. Like this is the Trump strand of like, <laughs> like it just really pissed That's off. That's the original like, strand. The, the original the, the strand, Trump yeah, one. right? Like yeah. for sure, it's crazy. Um, no, what was it? Was it the Chinese one? The Chinese virus? That's what he was calling it, remember? The, the, Chinese, the, virus. Chinese, the Chinese, Chinese virus. The Chinese virus. The Chinese virus. Yeah, that's racist. 
Oh man, like you know that? <laughs> nobody's ambiguous about Trump. Like everyone has like one side or the other. Like they're pretty. Like I was, I was pretty open minded. My my uh, my brother was like a super Trumper beforehand. He was like, oh, and my wife was like a super anti Trumper. So I couldn't even have them in the same room. I mean, it was like how polar opposites are people like that were like pro or po like uh, anti Trump is nuts. How that all kind of like uh, worked out. He was. He's he's a polarizing figure. I mean, th totally. that's what he is. I mean, I mean, the media paints something, and I'm sure that matters. But he just. Yeah, that, that's who he is. Well, how how crazy that like a stand up comedian has been the biggest voice of like <laughs> the COVID movement outside of the CDC, like Rogan coming on and like like cracking open the case, like he's like uh like uh sixty minutes or some shit, like it's insane. Dude, those interviews should be happening at, at, at like a national level with some of these other very respected reporters that you know you used to expect that they'll interview any person who was in an accident or has a backup story, but yeah. they won't talk to these obviously well-respected, well-educated scientists that are, you know, against the narrative. That's Well, that's what's cool about social media is like it's, it become, I mean, like when you look at the old, like 30 years ago when there was ABC, CBS, NBC, like the Fox was came out maybe like 35 years ago. Like there was only a handful of ways you could get information. And so much of that was funneled through, do we want to say, do we want, you know, and there's always, look, everything is out there because they're making money, right? So like if you're a company and you're making a 25% of your revenue from this, you know, from Johnson and Johnson, and then a story breaks about this Johnson and Johnson subsidiary causing cancer in babies, Ethically, should you run it? Yeah, but like, are you gonna? Probably not. But now with social media, podcasts and stuff, it gives you the the platform to really go out there, and it's much harder to censor. Um, the problem isn't censoring as much as just getting getting your voice heard. M me personally, like I'm like. I, I'm a big, like, I know that the pharmacies fucking fuck everybody and like there's, it's money. Right. But for me, the big thing is like alien disclosure. Like there's, there's no doubt in my mind that there are aliens out there, that there's multiple types of aliens, that the government <laughs> has been in contact with aliens. I'm trying to get, um, coordinate with Dr. Steven Greer to come on. And um, he's been, his schedule's been back and forth. Stephen Green, he's got two different, uh, he's like the foremost expert on like yeah. alien. Um, I alien love his, his uh, Netflix and uh, not yeah, Netflix, Prime. They're on Prime. They're on, they're they were on Netflix too, undisclosed and I, or unacknowledged. And, and then the Contact other one. Contact of the Fifth Kind or something? Uh, I'm not sure. I think yeah. it was like the follow up to it. But yeah. there's just, there's just yeah. so much irrefutable evidence of when you watch these documentaries, it's like, wow, like you've got, there's too many people that are saying the same thing and like high up, like the former secretary of defense of like Canada, like uh, yeah. he's like, yeah, no, we've got a ton of fucking UFOs. Like, and it makes sense that they kind of all want to, you know, cause what would happen if tomorrow Biden comes out and goes, Hey, uh, there's totally fucking aliens. People would lose their shit. Like it'd be pandemonium. I mean, yeah, government is, panic. yeah, government <laughs> is all religion and government is all about control, yeah. you know, keeping uh, people in line. I, I don't know if there would be panic. There might be. Absolutely. But I, I think even deeper than that is like, if, if they do come out with that, then we probably don't need gas. We probably don't need to worry about all the well, those are all the assumptions that come along with it like they they got here first of all everybody's like oh if there's aliens they, what if they want to kill us I'm like first of all if they got from wherever the fuck they're at to here if they wanted to kill us we're done like there's nothing we can do it's like it's like i can go fuck a squirrel up real well and that squirrel is not going to mount much of an offensive but like the idea that yeah there's free sustainable energy and all that stuff comes along with well if this happens because think about that too right like if there are aliens and they do come here like the oil industry is fucked i mean there's so many things that fundamentally pharma pharma's fucked i mean like there's so church many church yeah well fucked. church has been fucked for quite a while yeah, like i, I think there's church has fine. been fucked for a minute fine, dude. they have a lot of power the catholic show has a, which they all should i mean not all that's terrible generalization sorry to all the catholics but, you know, we find out all the secrets that high up in the Catholic they were keeping about things that they were doing to kids. And they're still there. Oh, yeah. And how the much money, how much power does the Vatican have? All lot. of it. Yeah, it's fucking so they're, they're not fucked. They're, they're doing well, fine. You I mean, like, they have a lot of money power. But I think that, like, year after year, generation after generation is less... Um, religiously inclined than, than the generation before. You know, I look back three generations and it was everybody was praying in God. Now it's like, it's I don't see a lot of people, uh, you put a hundred people in a room, how many of them are like actively religious versus just spiritual? And it's probably a small, a much smaller percentage. Because I think as we become more sentient and we kind of go, you believe in that space God and I believe in this space God and we got to go kill each other. And, and, and have you ever seen the movie, the documentary Zeitgeist? So Zeitgeist, if you haven't seen it, is a great documentary it's on YouTube. And what it does is it takes fundamentally, like you look at the like Catholicism, you have um, some of the staples of Catholicism, like the 12 
apostles and then died and rose three days later and all these different things. And it, it parallels like all these different things from like going back thousands of years before yeah. Christ. You look at the Zodiac sign is 12 and it's because of like the different ways that the moon and stuff and like the sun is the sun and like how like, you know, Horus and stuff would like die and come back in three days. So there's so many parallels that were infinitely before Christianity and the way the Bible just kind of explains it is, well, the devil put it there so that they just to test your faith also give us 10% of your income. So it's crazy, man. But like the, even the even the Vatican has like a branch now to deal with um, like aliens, like are they gonna contact and how are they gonna deal with that? And are there, how is their jujitsu gonna be? One of the most powerful <laughs> telescopes in the world, it's in, in Vatican City. And I mean, allegedly it's, it's named Lucifer. Really? Uh, have you ever seen that? How, how Lucifer? Is, yeah, how, how insane is that? Where is that? Uh, in, in the Vatican? Or, or close to the Vatican. Really? The Vatican? Is that, a, is that a thing? We looked that up. Is Lucifer. the Lucifer telescope in the Vatican? That's, that's like, that's pretty hilarious. That's, pretty, that's wow. crazy. Like, who was in charge of naming that? Like, what if that was a practical joke and the guy died before he could tell everybody? He's like, let's name this thing Lucifer. Yeah. I, Don't uh, touch. Like, we're going <laughs> to name it Lucifer in honor of Bob. The Lucifer telescope. No, the Vatican does not own a telescope called Lucifer. That's so eh. Damn. We're, we'll edit that out so it didn't look like you just made a, a faux pas there. It's okay. It sounded like a cool fact. We can just yeah. do a pop up, like boop. It's not called Lucifer. It's called Satan's big cock. <laughs> <laughs> that way, the Vatican can say it owns Satan's big cock. Uh, Wikipedia: Lucy, L-U-C-I, originally Lucifer, large binocular telescope near infrared spectroscope utility with camera and integral field unit for the ecstatic research. Extra galactic research is located in the Vatican. Now I'm confused because I just heard Lucy and Lucifer is related. No, they changed the name from Lucifer to Lucy? Yes. So Lucifer used yeah. to be in the Vatican they and he was, call they Lucifer. called it, they, they challenged to Lucy. Lucy. They just gave Satan a, a, a nickname. <laughs> I was a woman. <laughs> they just gave Satan a nickname. Like, ah, we'll just give him a pet. No, you know, know what happened? People started talking about it and they're like, all right, all right, you're right. We fucked up. We took it too far. <laughs> we'll just call kidding. It Lucy. Just kidding. No, they went, we'll call it Lucy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's totally fine. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's crazy. Like, I, were you, did you grow up, um, Brazil is very Catholic, right? Yeah, yeah, Brazil is uh, Christian. Is it Christian? Yeah. Did you grow up in a, like a... Yeah, heaven? Venezuela is super Catholic. Like, super I, Catholic. Like I grew up going to church every Sunday with the whole family, being like an altar boy, doing yeah, like... Yeah, like I was too. My grandma would go to church like Monday night, Tuesday nights, and Thursdays. Like it was intense. It was yeah. really intense. Yeah, the, South America in general, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, Catholic sure. the Catholic religion is like fucking guilt on steroids, right? It's like, hey, you uh, you looked at that person, you're going to hell. But the good thing about that was like anything you did, you basically could get away with it with like three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers. Like it was pretty cool. It but that's where cool. they lost me. Like I remember about to make the first communion, maybe like 10, 11 years old, and they pulled us into the little whatever, you know, you're doing like your, your school, your, your Catholic school stuff. And they're like, all right, this next thing, we're going to go and... Uh, confess your sins and uh you gotta tell this guy who's there everything you've done wrong and i'm like mm, this sounds like a setup like no way <laughs> yeah, so yeah I'm this not, dude you're not tricking me this, this dude who shit. everyone looks up to is gonna know everyone's secrets and he's gonna keep it to himself no i know my mom put you up to this this yeah. is not real but all right cool it's like the opposite of santa it's like go sit over there tell santa what you want so you can listen in and like make notes so your parents are like oh, that motherfucker did take money out of my wallet like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like asshole but, but, but think about it they're like indoctrinating you from that age to just oh, for have sure. that coffee and, and yeah you telling me to do whatever and that now i'm forgiven yeah like, yeah uh-huh Send me a fax and oh. I get a receipt from that. I was watching The Simpsons and uh, Bart was like, he's like, I got it all figured out. He's like, I'm just going to be an a like, he didn't say asshole. He's like, I'm just going to do anything I want. And then deathbed, uh, deathbed repentance. And it's perfect. I get absolved. He's yeah. like, oh, you got a good angle, kid. And I was like, well, <laughs> you yeah, should be a politician. Some, yeah. You know, I, there's a lot of politicians that are on that tip. They're like, do whatever I want. And then really just be real sorry right before I kick the can. Because you know? like, who the fuck knows could be real, you know? Like, it's crazy. I was the same thing, man. I was, uh, I was like raised as, I was an altar boy. I was in like, I went to see like a uh, communion. I went to a Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school. And it was like, I had religion, no pun intended, shoved down my throat. Um, but it was just like, hey, yo. <coughs> oh, <coughs> the cough was there. <coughs> my, my throat's having uh, bad flashbacks. So, um, but yeah, it was crazy. And like, because of having religion, like so shoved down my throat, like, I think it, it like, I made that, that, that U-turn to go, what, like, why are we, 
why are we so like this is has to be the way and like i tried to be buddhist for a while but like religion is just not for me if it's for you great you know if like that's your moral compass and and you can get something from it it's like martial arts right like i don't think any one is the right answer but something that's like the right one for you and that you can get some value from it and aliens are real uh, they have to be that what do you think you think aliens man i don't know <laughs> well you know <laughs> I'm, I'm, i don't Could know be? It, it's too big you know the the, the, the galaxies. The galaxy. and, yeah. yeah, it should be the galaxies. There's more. So we, we don't know nothing yeah. about, like, like they say, like, uh, the, what's called the guy that is going to Mars? Uh, uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon. There's life there. That's oh, why, yeah. That's why they say. Uh, like I that's why he like say. I, yeah. I don't think that's so, a, I don't think that it's a question of whether or not there's life anymore. I think the question is whether or not there's intelligent life. <clears throat> because they found... Um, like craters on Mars and things that showed that there was remnants of water and like crystallized water and stuff. Yeah. So I think that they have like bacteria that they come back with, which to me is like, I wonder if my conspiracy mind starts going and I'm like, I wonder if they're like slowly releasing this info. Like, oh, hey, there's life. It's not intelligent. Calm down. And then like in another three years, you're like, it's plant life. Then in like another five years, you're like, it's really stupid dog life. And then like in 30 years, you're like, yeah, you're basically working for fucking Zunu now. Like, you know, like he's he's our new overlord. Imagine the vaccines to go to Mars. How many vaccines are you going to need to go to Mars? Yeah, you're going to have to just, you're going to have to be on a, a Lysol drip. Just yeah. <laughs> we, found, we found COVID in Mars, guys. <laughs> for sure. Like that's probably where it came from, that, that, the Chinese COVID on Mars. So, so in your theory where <coughs> aliens exist, which I'm, I, I'm leaning to agree with you, you think is like super common in the sense that there might be life in Mars that we are not aware of and in every other uh, planet in the solar system or is it like scatter? So I think that like there's there's more universes than there are grains of sand in the world. So if you really think about that, so like, like a multiverse. Oh well, I mean multiverse is like parallel universes. Let's just think on like just on the one plane of existence. Like we're still confined. Like if you took a, a dog, right? Like his reality is confined by his belief system, his intelligence. He can't think. He doesn't have a sense of self, right? So like even within our own intellect. We're still confined by our own senses of like, you know, smell, touch, stuff like that. Like, so to think that there's not like a higher plane is is crazy to me, right? Yeah. Like, I think we all got here for some reason. And I think that it's like, without even having tangible proof, is it illogical to think that we're the only life force out there that, yeah, I mean, like, if you really think about it, like, how are we the only intelligent life? And if you look at like, if you really want to go take the walk down the rabbit hole in terms of like, you look at the Roswell landing and stuff, like technology from like humans been around for tens of thousands of years, the technology we had until like the 1940s is dwarfed exponentially by the technology we had by like, I believe in reverse engineering. Like we took this thing and how the fuck does that work? And then suddenly we have microwaves and fucking cellular phones and TV pictures and people are being sent here and we can go hyper speeds and all that like in granted technology is exponential, right? Like this microchip that we invented today is going to play a role in that AI tomorrow, but it really has like grown so fast over the last like 60, 70 years. Like we've come further in seven years than we did in 7,000 craziness. So I, I agree with you in the sense that we're natural, right? We're a natural occurrence and nothing in nature occurs in once. So for that matter, like you said, you know, there should be plenty, plenty of universe, plenty of everything. But then the next question is, do you believe in uh, time travel? Because sometimes the, 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 the argument or the, or the idea splits into being aliens or being humans for the future really advanced. You watched Interstellar a lot, didn't a you? Lot. A lot. A lot. Last so, night. You know, time travel is, is theoretically possible based on like wormholes and like the way that, you know, if you like, I don't know if we can, I'm, I'm going to fuck up quantum physics right here, but basically like time, like a wormhole just takes two parts of time and like it becomes like a poking a hole through it. So in theory, um, if you could pass through a wormhole, time travel is possible. Now, I don't know if that's going to be something we experience or anything like that. I'm just hoping Elon Musk finds a way to upload our consciousness to like the clouds so that we can live forever if we want to. Um, but I don't know. Like, I mean, if I, I think that like the first pill to swallow is that we're not alone in this incredibly vast universe. And, um, you know, Joe used to do, Rogan used to do a stand up bit when people would go to the Grand Canyon and they'd look down and be like, oh, look at how fucking crazy that is. And he's like, look up. What the fuck's that motherfucker? You know, and it's like, that's crazy, right? Like, cause like we look at this thing, we're still pigeon held, like looking at our feet the whole time. And like that goes on forever up, up. That's fucking forever. Like you can't even really think about how far and how big that is. So, but like, 
I think like common sense, right? Like if there were aliens, the next question is, is would the government acknowledge them and why or why wouldn't they? What's why would they, there's no benefit of the government coming out and saying there's aliens. There's, yeah. there's no benefit. Like they're going to lose control. It's going to be fucking chaos. Like we, we get like a, a little chicken disease from China and we're losing our shit. Inflation's up like 80% of the dollars in circulation now were printed in the last 24 months. Like fucking inflation's insane. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So, like, if they said, you know what, okay, there are little gray men from, like, Beta Reticula or whatever, and they've been giving us information, and also, like, I don't know if there's a reptilian race running the government or anything, but in terms of, like, different types and species of, like, aliens, I absolutely believe that we're not alone, you know, and that that's the biggest, you know, Stephen Hawking said, uh, you know, that if... Um, if there were aliens that they would probably be aggressive or that they would probably like want to kill us. And I don't necessarily agree with that. Cause I mean, I think like, like there's, if they're here, the only thing I can think of is if there's some difference in terms of time, like maybe a day to us or maybe like a hundred years for us is a half an hour for them. Who knows? Maybe that like on that spectrum or something, but there's a, there's a few documentaries on Netflix too, that even talk about you see these like videos, right? Like, they're always fucking grainy and from way far away, and for some reason off of balconies in Mexico. But like these, like this spa- the, the, the space, the orbs, right? The, or- the orbs, and like there's different shapes, but the way they move, there's it's the only, um, it's the only craft that doesn't have any like, um, like trail of chemtrails or any like thing like that. But and and that's always been very fascinating to me. Like, how does that propulsion system work? And I, I can't think of the guy's name. He's um he's another big Vinny. You remember the guy's name? That's uh he's an alien conspiracy theorist. That he's uh, allegedly um, what? No, I just was talking about him. He he uh, allegedly worked at uh, Area Fifty One, and people tried to debunk him all the time. He's got oh, a, Bob Lazard. Bob Lazard. Did yeah. you watch the Bob of Lazard? Course. I have been. A, I mean. I've, Bob, Bob, Bob Lazar, yeah, Bob Lazar. Yeah. So, like, Bob, you know, talks about how an alien spacecraft works with, you know, like, like the electromagnetic and cre- uh, creates a gravity propulsion. field, right. right? Well, like, basically, like here, how like this drops because of gravity that they can put the gravity field wherever they want. So, if they're mm-hmm. here, they put it here, and they go, they basically get sucked into the gravity of it, mm-hmm. and that's why they're able to move so quick. I'm like, that makes a ton of sense. Um, but who, I mean, who knows if it's real? But that's some fucking interesting stuff. How do they make this tour? Uh, the steering, yeah, I think so. The, the the way that that my understanding of it is is like it's it's wired into like how your thought process. Like it's not like, yeah, woo, you know, like because like we're still, like right, Musk, yeah, uh, because Neuralink. we think of steering in the way that we understand steering, which is left not the theory, like the theory, how they how they they, uh, they make the steering like that. There's aliens out, out there, and then all those things. Oh, you mean like Bob Lazar? Yeah, yeah. Well, this guy they said that he or was something like. Well, he uh, alleged, so he he in the nineties came out with all this information and talked about element one sixteen, which at the time you know it wasn't proven and it was just proven lately. Recently, yeah. And uh, so, so he has a lot of information. He the reason they call it Area Fifty One is because of Bob Lazar and mm-hmm. all the info. He, he kind of went crazy. They found out his wife was cheating on him, and, and that he was that, a little yeah. bit uh, unstable. And they're like, let's take him out of these projects because this guy's gonna lose the yeah. And then they just stopped picking him up because there's like a special airport that he was going and from there traveling to uh, to landing on, on on S4 area 51. Well, the, the the so like the big thing with um uh Roswell was you know the whole thing. Oh, it was a weather balloon. It was right. a weather balloon, right? So on his deathbed, I don't remember the guy's name, but the guy that was the head of PR for the army that wrote that press release on his deathbed, and he has nothing to gain from this. He wasn't writing a book. He he uh, swore an affidavit that I lied. That wasn't a weather balloon. It was a recovered spacecraft. Wow. So like things like that, or I mean, like, I don't know Bob Lazar. I think he's very credible. I mean, if you look at the do the diligence, it makes a lot of sense. But if you look on a macro level, like um, at some of the things like Stephen Greer talk about in, you've got interviews and documentaries with like multiple heads of state, former like a CIA agents, people, and they're all kind of like saying the same thing that the, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's it's very reasonable to think that, that that's the case. So you thought you were coming here to talk about jujitsu. Now we're talking conspiracy <laughs> theories, space, yeah. <laughs> crazy shit like that. It's bananas. But um, what's uh, yeah? Did, how does your wife feel about like the whole pharmaceutical company in like the conspiracies? And does she like is she on board with the medicines or is she just like Ugh, fuck these people? Man, she was like just like fuck these people. She's not really like sure, sure she like she get information all that, but she, she don't care like no more because there's a lot of bullshit behind that. Which is she's just like oh whatever. So, so do and your wife's not vaccinated. You're not vaccinated. Would no. she? Why not? She doesn't want to take it. But why though? Is she like doesn't uh, trust it? Yeah, yeah. It's too like there's too much bullshit behind. And then we have a few friends that took it, and 
two months after they pass away. After the vaccine? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that people are gonna pass away, but they, they this people did. But like, what do they have any they idea? They had like why? a stroke and heart inflammation and those and things. They were, but were they like 90 years old? No, like young six. Oh, wow. I know 126, 32. Wow. Jiu Jitsu people too? No, not Jiu Jitsu people. No, you, can't, friends, you can't die he, if you do Jiu Jitsu. It's yeah, <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> you're, bullet, you're officially bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, so that's why we didn't take. Not saying that's gonna happen or uh, that, but we decided like. Hmm. That's great. What do you know? What vaccine that they took and then they died? Was it the same vaccine? Uh, I don't know if it's I'm Pfizer, God. I hope it is Pfizer. fucking Pfizer because I took Pfizer. Which one do you Pfizer take? Moderna. Do you know which, which one you take? Huh? Do you oh. take Pfizer, Johnson and Johnson, Moderna? What'd you take? I don't remember. I remember listening before the before I took the uh, vaccines. There was this. Um, this, uh, I don't know if she's a cardiologist, but she was doing an interview and she was talking about like, that they're putting these like m nano chips in the, th mm. like they're supposed to be like, yeah. like the whole conspiracy theory is that the government wants to control everyone, right? So that they can turn off your credit cards and like control They're gonna turn you. the 5G on and- <coughs> they're they're just, you're just, All of a sudden we're just a bunch of fucking antennas but walking around. Like Chris Hedges just start showing up to Jiu Jitsu suddenly. Oh, that would be, then you know the world's ending. They turn on his it's chip. It's the apocalypse. <laughs> they turn on his chip and he shows up to Jiu Jitsu. Um, but you know, so like that was like, you know, they, they I, you know, I was hearing that, oh, this is another control mechanism and that they're going to put these little microchips in there and that this isn't safe and they're going to be able to fuck with like mercury levels and this and that. And it's, it's crazy to think of how, yeah, how they talk about the mercury level. Yeah. yeah they're mm -hmm. talking about that. So, so and, and I mean, there's a lot of doctors that didn't take. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of doctors that didn't take. You think Fauci took the vaccine? I think Biden took. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think Biden knows what he's doing anymore, no, man. That dude's. He's like, oh, gosh, like I just every time I like Biden only won this election because he was running against Trump and everyone didn't like Trump. There's no other election Biden would have won at this age. I mean, he's just he's so freaking. He, he doesn't look healthy. He doesn't look like, no. you know, he, he doesn't look like there's a lot left there. I thought that's like the, 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 the energy that you need for yeah. that kind of job and that kind of pressure doesn't seem that's there. And there needs to be like fail safe. So like you shouldn't have that much power and be not fully coherent, like almost on a weekly basis. It should be like, how's your heart? You're good. You can run a mile. Like you're not like you would like, imagine if he was like 800 pounds, like people be like this fucking guy is running the country, but like his brain is like 800 pounds. Like but, he's kind of like, where am I? <laughs> but wait, like he, he usually gets like statements wrong here and there and totally understandable. Sure. That dude has to remember the nuke coat on the secret briefcase that the president carries around, right? Like yeah. uh, that guy's going to remember when, it, when, when everything counts, you think he's going to go. And get the right combination. I There's, hope it's like a palm print or something because that dude ain't getting the eight numbers together. <laughs> yeah. tell you Imagine if you really needed to know. That's what it. I'm saying. Like, no shot. Uh, 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 what's my dog's name? Yeah. Smushy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so what if you could like Hunter? Yeah, yeah Hunter. Yeah, yeah. Hunter O two. Yeah, it, 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 we don't know. Trump says it. Oh, it's pussy. Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> so how do you make that? That's crazy. Yeah, like luckily we haven't had any. Uh, we haven't had any nuclear. That's like the most horrific thing is fucking nuclear Good. attacks. And that's one of the things that they talk about is like that that aliens disarm are here them, to right? disarm, disarm the them. nukes. And you see like those. Some mm -hmm. of that shit's crazy. You gotta yeah. watch. Yeah. Um, you've gotta watch that unacknowledged. It's a great documentary. What, what's it called? Unacknowledged. Unacknowledged. Yeah. Well, I'll have him, uh, Vinny. Vinny. Send him a link to unacknowledged via email so that he can uh, he can check that out. And the other one, uh, uh, Gather of the Fifth Time or so, is it, is the following after that one? That one's really good, which is how he explains how you should get together with people to kind of make contact and stuff. Like you can actually yes. like we should upon. You know, it's yeah, like using like it's like um, like almost a meditative state. Yes. And what's crazy, right, is like I don't like I'm not. Um, you know, like the Indians had this thing called Akashic memory where they thought mm -hmm. that like like everyone's thoughts and stuff because you the Akashic library. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like everything like your brain sends out like radio signals. It's like an, an energy, right? So like they said like, oh, it's basically up in the stratosphere or whatever it is that you can you can tap into these things. <clears throat> so it's not crazy to think that. But like ever since I was younger, like I always had this weird feeling like alien contact would be mental, not necessarily physical. Like there'd be like a, or, or the communication wouldn't be like, Dear, dear alien, how was your day? You know, it would be like a different sense. So when I watch that and like they're all getting together in like the desert and they're like able to, they're to some extent very successful at being able to like summon 
craft to where they are and stuff. And like now there's certain areas, Florida is actually a hotbed for that. Like, I mean, a lot of times because we have the Homestead Air Force Of course base. it is. Yeah, well, Florida is a hotbed for fucking everything, man. Like <laughs> all the aliens are just like, yo, who's got fucking, uh, here's some, here's some fucking COVID for you guys. Have fun. <laughs> like, let's see, let's see how they deal with that. Well, well, some, some people like speculate that like the, 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 the most important rule on the universe is like the, the, the law of free will. And whenever you break someone's free will, you make them do something against, you know, what they want. It, it's fucked up for them and for you, right? We're back to the Catholic Church. And back, yeah. <laughs> back to the and, and the aliens. But what I'm saying, like, that is allegedly one reason why aliens don't just show up in the middle of the streets. Because then they would be breaking everyone's free will. Like, that's why they're contacting, like, the governments to kind of initiate the conversation towards these some conversations about meditation and, and but again if you already have that and you're meditating and your free will is to make contact then that's what this doctor is saying right like that you can actually make it happen with your free will right. and other people getting involved yeah i mean can you imagine what a fundamental shift on like on a global level like that would be if they were just like hey tomorrow because there's governments that have basically said that we're just acquiescing to the united states in terms of when to release this there's that whole project disclosure and like mm -hmm. when to release this with project blue book going back before then yeah. like when to release this information because there's just a preponderance of of information that uh that not only is there are aliens but that their jujitsu sucks no imagine go to you go teach jujitsu in mars Go teach jiu jitsu. Anymore. That's a <laughs> long, good. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, that's a long way to go to fucking train, really. But you got to go there weekly, is it? Um, I, I BJJF Mars. No, 2023. Like BJJF is already on Mars, man. Like they're <laughs> they're so fucking they're so far out there. What's um What's your favorite part of jiu jitsu, man? No, sorry. What's your favorite part of jiu jitsu? Uh, what what like what made you like it the most? Like how come you got into it? Uh, the competition. The competition. Yeah, yeah. Were you competitive we, before? Yeah, before you should train boxing. I did, I did boxing for seven years, seven years. Yeah. So in between this time, I started training jujitsu. So I want to fight all the time. The boxing we did is spar sparring all the time. I'm like, oh, let me do jujitsu. So I started sparring, sparring, sparring. And then I went to the first competition, like two months and a half. And then, and then after that, oh, he hooked me up. He hooked me. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I was just like, that's what I'm going to do. So I like to compete, you know, that's all. I wish to compete more than I, than I train. Have you ever uh, thought about doing mixed martial arts at all? I thought about it. I was thinking about it the last few days, but I don't know. No. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm like, man, it's not that nice, like, get punched in the face. and then, No, nobody uh, likes getting yeah, punched in the face. Not an easy like, career. You yeah. got to really like, I think if you're going to do something like this, got to really like. Because if, sure. if you're just going to do for money, you got to make, like, in five years. Because yeah. longer than that, you're not going to make it. No, that's that's yeah. that's smart because a lot of people like, and I think not just MMA but just life in general. A lot of people chase money first, and they don't think about the fact that it, it's not something they're passionate about. Yeah. Your ceiling is only going to be so high because you're only going to put in so much effort if you're only doing it for money. Versus, I love this thing that I'm doing, like <clears throat> like jujitsu. Like I teach jujitsu for free because I like teaching jujitsu. Like I, it's part of my soul. It's part of who I am, and like it's given me a lot. And I like, like my payment is seeing people progress in life, right? So like you don't get if like you can't get into MMA and be like I only want to do this for money. Your ceiling is going to be pretty low in terms of like you have to really love being competitive, love like every aspect of the training, the sacrifice, the dedication. It's it's different, man. I mean, you look back at like the first UFCs and like I like I, I every like three or four years I like to watch like UFC one or two just to watch like these old overweight men like just beating the tar out of each other. Jason wishing there was a time machine to, to oh, go there to yeah. the day before. I, I, yeah, like I mean like I'd like to think I would have like that would have been fun just to watch man like much but like you could put any anybody from the UFC today in the UFC one and they're going to win. They're going to beat Hoist. They're going to beat everybody. There's not only are they better athletes but they understand cross training and stuff and mm. <clears throat> you know it's just so crazy. Yeah, just that I really like. If you like it, you're going to do good. Did Cyborg Cyborg did a couple MMA fights, didn't he? Mm, no, I think he, I he, won, did. he wants to do one. I don't know if he did. Before. He wants to do one? Yeah, yeah. He's like, he needs to hurry up. Is he 40? 41, 42. 41, yeah. 42. He's, I yeah. have like a memory 41. that I have like a memory that maybe he did one. That's what I, I thought. I, thought I, 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 I have like a memory, but I'm, I'm, I don't know why. 
that's why like all like all the Brazilians that like win big titles, like they just kind of wait for like maybe getting one payday in Japan. Like it's like like <laughs> maybe I remember I was talking to Pablo Popovich for a minute when I was um about possibly fighting like Ben Asker when I was talking with Pablo a little oh, bit. Oh wow. Because you know he beat him with the ankle lock and the thing was ADCC and like the one FC was like looking for someone to like but you know the the guys just want and, and I don't blame them. They, they just want so much money, you know. Um but that's the thing is like it's you can't just now you can start making an MMA career, but you have to get to the UFC before you can really make a living or arguably Bellator or one mm-hmm. of the other organizations. But like, let's just call a spade a spade. Everything besides the UFC is really a B tier organization. Nothing really competes with the UFC, the UFC on every, any metric, even if they want to think they do. Now they can still be the Honda and Toyota to Mercedes and be sustainable. <clears throat> but for the most part, they're not. PFL is throwing a lot of cash around. That's nice. But uh, you know, I don't know how many times they're going to keep writing million dollar checks and, and you know how long that works out for, but like just recently, you can start making money in the UFC. I mean, back when back when like the UFC was like you know UFC 50, 60, like those were like two and two contracts. It's crazy, you know, two and two thousand dollars to show up, two thousand dollars to win, Jeez. and I got to pay my own MRI, it, extra cornerman hotel. Wait, was that how? little? Yeah. Two and two, yeah. Uh, I, I I didn't fight. I had a contract to fight at UFC sixty with um. I was supposed to fight Spencer Fisher, and it was two two four four six six eight eight. So it's two and two four and four. It was crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, but like, crazy that you gotta pay for your medical. Like, how, yeah, that's so what's I, nuts. not only do I have to win, I cannot get hurt to keep all the right. money to keep all the money. You know, yeah. because a visit to the hospital, what's an MRI? Seven hundred, eight hundred. Yeah, you know, like sure. now they have now it's you know they have the insurance. The UFC has now insurance, they do. but back then it was horrible. Exactly. I mean, you could you could legitimately because like nobody wanted to go with one cornerman. So you got to pay for the other cornerman's flight. You're paying you know ten percent to your manager, ten percent to your like boxing gym. Stuff, gym. Right. 30% for taxes. I mean, you could go fight for the, your first two years bucks. and be losing money. That's why, like, I, I used to love the first UFC. Is like, you'd get guys, no other professional sport did someone have two jobs. You know, it wasn't like, this is Aaron Rodgers, who's also a carpenter. Like, like no, like, you know, it's, a, you know, it's crazy. You'd have, like, guys, like, uh, even when... Uh, um, Rich Franklin was still defending his belt. Like he was like, he's a school. They always talk about he, he was a, a school teacher until recently. And like, you know, this is several years after he's been in the UFC. It's like crazy to have oh, these, crazy. these jobs, but that's what's uh you know, that's the thing that like the, the issue that I've always taken with um, MMA, not the issue, but the, my biggest concern is, is guys that get hurt and then they get on pain pills and then they never get off pain pills and it just fucking ruins their lives. And there's no like real support mechanism out there. And I see that a lot, you know, guys get injured and like guys that never did, guys that would like not even smoke weed, they get injured. Then they do like Vicodin. Then they're fucking addicted to Vicodin and then their career goes, you know, they're getting, and they don't know when to stop. And the problem is, is they got like Conor McGregor fanboy friends. Everyone's around them. Everybody wants to be Conor McGregor's friend because he's famous. He's in the spotlight. He gets treated a certain way. So like, it's hard to have the friends that tell you, you need to stop fighting. You may hate me, not want to talk to me, not be my friend anymore, tell me, go fuck myself. But you look like shit. You've lost weight. You're not there. You're going to get really fucking injured. And maybe not today, but you're going to eat that shot that's going to have brain aneurysms and contusions five years, 10 years down the road that are going to affect your you know, your ability to function. And nobody wants to say that to those guys because then you lose your ticket on the yacht. You lose your fucking, you know, your, you, you lose your Dylan Dennis, uh, you know, like jet and get to use a rolls on the weekend. It's a tough fucking, it's a tough sport, man. It's tough to make a living. It's probably the toughest, right? I mean, the the, the support that you have at the beginning, unless you come from like an amazing team, might not really be there. Like you said, the pay that you have at the beginning might not be there. And then when you do make it to the top and you win a bunch of fights, that's your money. What are you going to do with it? Because you're not going to keep fighting for the rest of your life, right? So now you got to be smart and, and, and invest it well or, or whatever, you know, do something with it. So you have something for, like you said, the old days when you're all in mm-hmm. here. And, and <clears throat> the, the, like it's like the problem with a lot of guys that they anytime you make money suddenly and it's not earned, it's more like one, right? Like where you're fighting and all of a sudden you make a bunch of money. They, they piss through it a lot because they don't have the business acumen to either a surround themselves with people to like, what should I do with this money? There's only a handful of guys that like have really been able to, unless you make a ton of money and you kind of put it away. But like there's guys that like they'll make a couple hundred grand for two, three years. And then they're like scratch broke again because they just that you know just don't think it's ever gonna stop you know oh, I made my fifty thousand dollar UFC fight of the night bonus they went out and bought themselves a new car and gave their friends you know a couple thousand dollars each and they went a couple of dinners later and you're like oh shit 
I, I'm back to fucking 500 bucks in my and bank you, account. You, and you didn't pay the taxes yet. I mean, yeah, like, and uh, you're like, uh, 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 oh, son of a bitch. There's that thing too. Yeah, yeah. Then, they, got you happy. then they just, they <laughs> moved to Brazil. Well, that's the thing. If you're like a Brazilian, like that's why like when, depending on what country you reside in, there's like tax implications too. Like if mm. like, that's why like a lot of US fighters didn't want to fight in Brazil because they'd like take like 20 or 30% of the purse right out of the fucking top. Yeah, and 30, you have to, yeah, 30, 30 you have to like, wow. it's, it, fucking suck so the same thing it's like you you know you, you lose a lot of money to uncle sam unfortunately and he's that lifestyle of a fighter you know like you train hard you starve yourself you like you said you more than earn it you want it you now you gotta go celebrate and put the 10 pounds that you have lost in the next couple of weeks and spend all that money and pamper yourself and and again you're unless you have a very good manager you're you're your own boss and what you do for a living is take punches to the head. Yeah. You know, you're going to make the best decisions for the long run. You got to have, like, any time that, like, there's there's um commission-based, um like, managers, whether it's television, entertainment, or that. Like, in the beginning, you're kind of beholden to the manager. They're the ones getting you the opportunities. And you're like, oh. And then at the end, it's like they're the opposite. Like, you're the one who's like, you can be like, hey, get away from me. I want this guy. Now, you, everyone's, like, suckling at the teeth. So, like, loyalty is, is so key. And having trust with someone that you can, like, have that partnership with. Because a lot of guys, just, like, jujitsu schools or anything else, they bounce around all the time and there's no like real you know if there's no loyalty there it's hard to um, it's hard to build a, a career that's that's healthy and sustainable yeah but what's next for you in the jiu-jitsu space man got anything coming up so i'm gonna fight the europeans okay yeah in, in, it's gonna be in rome yeah and then i have panam's worlds adcc that's a busy schedule oh yeah did you have to, so do you have to qualify for the ADCCs or do you just go out there? No, I fought before, so I got second place, so I'm already. Already. I'm already, I'm already. So do they send, do they, is it anyone that makes podium gets uh, invited back? Or yeah, I think, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody, everybody can make podium, yeah. get invited back. What's, uh, what's your walk around weight? My weight? Yeah, right like now. Like now? <laughs> right now. He's laughing, he's like, I don't want to say. <laughs> 235. 235? Yeah. How much, what do you have to cut to? Well, I'm gonna fight heavyweight this year, so Oh, okay. So you're yeah, so two five like thirty pounds. Thirty pounds? Twenty nine to be exact. What's you what's <laughs> you like, how do you get ready for that? Just gotta diet. What what's your yeah, diet look like though? Man, I eat just little. Gotta eat little. Mm. Yeah, I eat like carbs, protein, fat, but little. Just smaller portions? Yeah, smaller portions. Do you drink? Yeah, because I eat a lot of big portions. Like what I'm gonna eat. Not, not like junk food. I don't eat junk food. I don't like I don't care too much. I eat, but I don't it's not like Oh, I'm gonna eat junk food. I would like big portions, like meat, and so I have just to eat smaller. Gosh. So, yeah. is, so who's um who's in your division for ADCC next year? Is Nicky Rod? Nicky Rod's uh, he he's is more nine nine. I don't know. I don't know. I don't he's, know. He think Nicky Rod's going heavyweight next year, isn't he? He's going nine nine. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I, I think I know. I know. Uh, uh, Gordon. Uh, Benna. Benna's gonna do it. Benna. Yeah. yeah. Daughter guys, I don't know. Benny Magalhaes. You beat Vinny last yeah, time. Yeah, I fought he, him. He beat Vinny in the in yeah. the quarters. Yeah, I fought him. Yeah, it's tough. Probably that guy, um, Felipe Felipe Andrew. Probably Felipe Andrew. Felipe Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Felipe maybe Andrew. Orlando. Did his, is he qualified, Felipe Andrew? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I know mean, there's. Well. I don't know. So I'm I, just assuming big names, you know. I'm just mm, yeah. the the big fight. Obviously, is going to be Andrew Andre Galvalo and um, and, Gordon. and Gordon. How do you think that one plays out, both of you guys? It's kind of it's kind of hard to say now. I mean, like if you see like Gordon is a small, is his two ones. Almost like his four, 40? Mm -hmm. yeah. be forty. Yeah, mm -hmm. that thing play. The age play plays a difference. There. Yeah, it's a big difference. I mean, I mean, we, we know that Andre is not gonna pull guard. He's yeah, he's not gonna pull guard. Always yeah. wrestle. I could see Gordon either trying to wrestle down a little bit or or even pulling guard. And uh, I think Andre on the top, Gordon on the bottom is very fun to to speculate what happens. But I do think if Gordon gets on top, somehow he's so good at staying yeah. heavy and relaxing that he'll give uh, Andre Galvao problems, maybe from mount arm triangles or or back strangles. If, if I had to guess, Gordon doing guard is really good too. Yeah. yeah, like he doesn't stop. That's the thing. He doesn't stop. He goes. Yeah. It doesn't stop. Have too much money. And and I think uh, Galvao might be a little bit more emotional than 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 Gordon. I, I mean, they're both, but you know that sometimes drains you. And and in a super yeah. fight, is is twenty or 40? 20. forty? Twenty. Oh, good. Forty minutes. <laughs> man. 40. And, and I mean, when was the last time we saw Gordon tap? So like, yeah, you know, you yeah. gotta go out and tap him. Yeah. Or if not, you're gonna get tired and 
that fucking guy gets on top of you. It's, it's difficult, but it's exciting. And, and I don't know what's the latest decision, but Gordon had asked permission to do his weight class too. Right. Yeah, He's gonna be the class and, and, and the super fight. So no absolute because the winner of the absolute gets fight, fight, the winner of them. Fight, yeah. But he's but he's uh his weight class. So you might see him there too. Yeah, that's gonna change. Uh, I think he's going over nine nine. Ah, he's going over over nine nine. Yeah, that's, right. then, that's then, where that's where Nicky Rudd is gonna be. Yeah, because he's gonna be heavier. Heavy, yeah, because yeah, like, yeah. Nicky said he's gonna he compete wants against to compete, Gordon yeah. in the eighties. Yeah, so it's gonna be the big boys. Which is gonna be, that's gonna be interesting to see how that goes. You know, because I mean, obviously, I think that like. You know they're in the room, so they know each other all the time. But like, there's certain attributes that that Nikki has. I wonder if he's going to be able to to get up to a level where he's going to put like the heat and threaten Gordon. Because I talked to Gary Tony. You know, when you had your match against Gary or against um against Gordon, where did you go in with like a game plan? Where you like, because you mean that that's your former student. You know him better than probably anybody. Um, and he was like, I'm eh, kind of look for leg locks, <laughs> but like he's like, it's <laughs> stuff, man. Like Gordon's on a whole new level, and he's so young, dude. That's the crazy thing. You yeah. too. You guys are. You got so many years of being competitive, yeah. Yeah. but but if, but I think if Nikki Rod has a, a a chance of beating Gordon, it's gonna be in like Abu Dhabi. You know that style where it's like you have to wrestle. Nikki Rod has this. What's this. the rule? It's no 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 um, points for the first ten minutes, and then how does it for the first half of the match? There's no points what? after the first half. So so some so the regular matches are ten. The yeah, finals right. and super fights are like twenty, or if you go to overtime, possibly mm -hmm. forty and stuff. Um, but but the other thing is like once you get to the finals and the super fights, you can't pull guard. If you pull guard in the first five, you get a negative point. So then you know, it, not that it means the end the of wrestling. the match, but it, you know you gotta yeah, rest. You gotta rest. Oh, so you can't like butt scoot. Yeah, you can't pull yeah. like the normal best match. I, I, I would I would guess that Gordon would be interested in in, in showing maybe Nicky Rod something. You know, like he, yeah, that'll be fun. That'll I don't, be fun. You think Gordon can hang with Nicky Rod on his feet though? I don't know because I think like, Nicky Rod said he took Gordon down a bunch when he first tr started training with him. Uh, so I. I I think he, I think he can hold himself, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think he's gonna be any take them that's gonna like injure him or something. Right. So like, yeah, yeah you no, know, for sure. Like, he, he'll know where to land. He'll know what to look for. And, and again, I, I think Nicky Rod brings an incredible amount of pressure from the top, from his passing, from his body log, from his back takes. So like, you, you do have to watch out a, a little bit for him. But again, I, I don't remember the last time I saw Gordon tap. Oh, I guess uh, Felipe Pena, right? Yeah, yeah the last time I remember. Yeah, yeah. Last time. That's another match I would love to watch. Oh, Felipe another Felipe Pena Gordon Ryan. I wonder why they they haven't figured that I, out. I think they just can't agree in prices, and you know, like it's it's. I mean, no prices, uh, salaries and yeah, and, yeah, yeah and compensation and stuff. But if, uh, Pena beat him twice, right? Twice, dude. same move too. Yeah, same move that back to. That was twice, yeah. Yeah. One hour three. Yeah, cool, man. We're, we're we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, he's like, get the fuck out of here. But <laughs> all right, man, I get it. So um, yeah. well, so like, well, give me your prediction though. Gordon versus Andre Galvalo. You got to pick one. Go Gordon. On. Gordon. Both of you guys picking Gordon. All yeah. right, we're gonna say Gordon. And what's the, what's how how does he win? Um, I say either arm triangle from the mount or choke from the back. So you're guaranteeing the submission. Gordon. I'm not. You said how is he gonna win? Oh, you're saying like maybe submission or points? Yeah, submission points. Referee's decision. Mm. Disqualification because he slapped him again. <laughs> <laughs> That's still that'll be hilarious. That'll yeah. be worth I'm gonna go on submission. Okay. Such a long match, you know. Yeah, let's say like heel hook or. Mm. I that's, guess, that's, that's what I'm feeling too. Is like, like I think he'd go back to his heel hooks sessions yeah. there because those are so hard to defend if you're such a high level like that. And they're so threatening all the time. But I feel like he's made a point to not use him as much to kind of show. That's the his, perfect way his, to go the, back to him now. That's though. true. No, that's what I'm saying. But he's been staying away from it. So it, yeah. it'd be exciting to see it and, and bring it back. show before him. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's crazy. Well, thanks you guys, both of you guys for coming on, man, and uh, good talking about a wide berth of things, not just jujitsu. It's always fun to pick your brain. So that was awesome. Appreciate you guys coming. In. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, man.